Okay, everybody, let's do this program. This is the one in chapter six, a switch statement、um, to output certain information. Okay, so here,、uh, since we need to get user input, we are asking the user to enter a code. Then we will need a scanner object. We always call it scan, but remember you can call it anything as long as it is、uh, meaningful. Okay. And once again, we need to import it. So let's do that. And we are asking the user to enter a code. <clears throat> so we need an integer variable. So we need to get、uh, an int variable code declared. So that we can store whatever the user enters into it. Okay. So now let's、uh, do the switch. If you look at this, these are all distinctive values. That means it's not a range; it's an individual distinctive value. So that's why we can use、uh, a switch. Okay. It's much more intuitive. So switch, <clears throat> lowercase. That's the keyword inside. We are testing what? What are we switching on? We are switching on code, right? Whatever the code is, we have an answer. So code is the expression value that we are evaluating. And remember, after switch, you should always have these curly braces. That's the body for switch. Okay. So <laughs> here you can see there is a problem. It says initialize variable. That means our code doesn't have a value. So、um, we need to give it a value. Let's ask the user. Give the user some instructions. Okay, enter a code, and I will tell you what it means. Okay,、uh, in HTTP protocol. That is the HTTP protocol code. Okay, so、um, I'm going to just use print so that the code is entered on the same line. I need the semicolon, not the quotes there. Okay, and then we need to read the code. So code is equal to <coughs> scan next int, and now we are good. So we 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 evaluate this code using switch, right? Evaluate it, and now let's see. Case two o two request accepted. So case two o two colon remember colon this two o two should not have this because in your previous example you have case a. Uh, but that is because a、uh, is a care variable. Okay, that option is a care variable. Here, code is an int variable, so you cannot have that. Okay, so in this case, when it is this, what do we do? We print out a statement, and it is request accepted. Okay, request accepted. And also remember, we need to put a break statement there. Otherwise, all the other cases will run. So I will just enter them right here、um, off the recording to save time. Okay. But once again,、uh, remember、uh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Let me do that. Okay. So I entered all the cases, and we have the break statement break. And here I don't have the break, and we will see what happens. Okay, here we don't have the break. Here we don't have the break, and here we have a break. And these are the stacked stacked cases. That means if it is five or two, or if it is five or three, or if it is five or four, we do these. And default means in all other cases we have no comment. Okay, no comment.、Uh, so. Let's run. <clears throat> okay, let's run、uh, twice just to show you. So if I enter three o one, that is this case. It should print out site moved permanently. Okay. Now I'm going to enter four o four. 
and let's see what will happen. Okay, 404. And you can see when I enter 404, it will print out not found, and then it goes on to 410. It doesn't matter whether the code matches that number. It doesn't matter. It just goes on to print out server busy and internal service error. Um, and uh, that is this one. And then there is a break. So it breaks out of the switch statement. So break is important when you want to execute just one branch of the uh, switch statement. If you just want to execute one case, okay? But look here, okay? In this case, we are not breaking out. In this case, we are not breaking out. In this case, we are, after all these three cases, we break out. So this is where you don't have the break statement because in all these cases, you want to run the same statement. And that is the all logic there, okay? So that's good, that's done. Um, let's see what else, okay? So we are done with this, and I have another one here. I said you can have a while loop inside a switch, etc., and you can do the, uh, for the previous programming exercise, add a while loop around the switch statement so that the user can keep entering codes until he or she decides to quit. Uh, how about we say um, until she, by entering zero, right? That's entering zero because you do want to tell the user what to do. Okay, oops, okay, so, we read this code, we want to uh, keep doing this, we need to add a while loop. So um, when does the loop continue? When the code is a three digit number, right? Or any other number. When does the loop not continue? When the loop is a zero, when the code is a zero. So. Uh, once again, ask yourself, when should we let the loop run repeatedly? When code is not a zero. So here is the loop uh, condition. Code is not equal to zero. Okay, so in that case, we keep running. I'm going to tap these in, okay, just to format it. Okay, so while uh, code is not zero, remember the curly braces, right? And end it here, curly braces. Just always remember that. So now let's run, and you will see this is an endless loop. Okay, I will run it. So enter a code 403, let's type 403, and you can see it's an endless loop. Why is that, everybody? Think about it. I'm going to stop it. Think about it. Uh, we get a new code here, but uh, and we test it. If it is zero, if it's not, we evaluate it, but we never get a new code. So the loop control variable uh, has never been updated. And we stress this uh, in chapter five, and now we are simply reviewing it. Okay, so you actually, after the switch statement, this is the switch statement, right? After the switch statement, you need to get a new value to refresh the variable so that we have, we know if we want to stop or not. Okay, so I'm just copying and pasting these two lines of code and put it after the switch statement, right? And then we read it. And this way, we should be able to continue. Let's run. Okay, let's enter uh, five, six, seven, and it says no comment. Um, let me just print. Uh, oh, this is print. And here, I think I have a print. Let's do a print line. Let's rerun. Okay, uh, one, two, three, no comment. Enter a code. Oh, C O C D. Okay. Um, 
four zero six. Do we have that now? Um, four ten. How about four ten? Okay, let's enter four ten. And server busy and internal uh, service error. Why? Because we have um, four ten. We don't have a break statement there, right? And so it keeps running. It comes here also, and that's another example to show you the break statement is important. Okay, so now I will enter a zero. Okay, let's just be very nice. After the loop, let's do um, system, and we just tell the user, you are done, and thank you. Okay, and delete this one. Okay, let's run it again. Uh, let's enter 202, 202, and let's enter a zero, and now thank you, we are done. Okay, so, and uh, of course, uh, this is just to show you, so in reality, to make your program functional, you need to put the break statement there. Okay, that's it, everybody.